everyone, Mr. Merkic here, and today I'm going to show you how to create a fully working Discord bot um, using Visual Basic. Now, I've looked since the request came in on the comment section, I did a bit of research on how these things work, and it seems like they're all done with C Sharp. And I personally actually didn't find any Visual Basic uh, way of doing it, so that's why I thought I'd do it like that. And also, I, I did a different approach to it. I don't do it like anyone else. Uh, I tried to keep it as much like the Skype as possible, so we all know what we're doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the project, and I'll call it um, Discord Bot here, and press OK. So we'll set up a new project in uh, Visual Basic. But the, before we're going to do that, we're going to go over to the uh, Developer section on Discord, and you want to go to the My App section, and you can see here this is my Merc Bot which I was testing with. But you want to click a new app. And by the way, you want to make sure that you've got Discord open and you're signed in and stuff. Um, just like that. And you want to give it a name. I'll just call it Mr. Merck Bot or something like that. And then we'll, you can give it a description if you really want to. You don't need to. Um, you can create the app. And now the app's been created successfully. You want to copy this client ID. Uh, we'll just make a note of it in a notepad for now. And we can also copy... Um, actually we won't do it just yet because we need to create the bot. We want to click create bot user and press yes to it and we want to tick public bot and hit save. Now what we want to do is uh, copy this token you want to click to reveal it. Now you don't want to show anyone this really but uh, in this video I'll generate a new one after I'm done so I'll just copy that there as well and that's that for now. Now what we can do is we need to let the bot join our channel or our server so from here on the left side we can go down to um, OAuth2 and we can click bots and then we want to copy this URL and we want to just put it there and copy our little ID that we got generated for us and put it where this number is there and then if we copy this link again and uh, navigate to it what will happen is we can choose the server we want to let this bot join in this case my Mr. Merkis server I'll press authorize and now it's authorized we can go to discord and you'll see that we got the Mr. Merkis bot here as well as well as the my testing bot there and they're offline of course so there it is that's how you get the bot into the server and that's all we need to do now for the uh, website of things. Now if we go to our program uh, you need uh, the new get package manager now I've already got it I've, if I'm not wrong this version came with it because I don't remember installing this myself but not all versions will have it so if you don't just look up how to get it it's really simple uh, you want to go down to tools new get package manager and then manage uh, new get packages for the solution. Now once you're on that you want to go on to online and select all and where it says search online you want to type discord.net and just wait for that to search now the unofficial API there we want to click install and while that's installing you can just look there's a few others there's the commands as well and uh, a lot of other people use that because the discord API unlike Skype actually has features and supports bots so um, they have a lot of useful stuff to create commands that way but um, me being me I've tried to keep it like the Skype method as much as possible and I actually did figure out a way um, to do it in here so and we're going to stick with that so we're going to go into the form load code here and obviously the first thing we want to do is uh, at the top of our code we just want to type imports discord just like that um, so we can use everything uh, that we need to use that's necessary. Now in here we're going to create a new instance of the Discord client so we'll say dim we're going to use with events because we're going to use the an event and we'll call it Discord and it's going to be as a new Discord uh, client just like that. And now in form load we can type in a try catch uh, we can type discord.connect and if you look 
inside here you can actually um, log in with tokens which we are going to be doing the token which we copied but you can also log in with the username and password here if you want to and but we're just going to be using this long token that we got for us and we'll put it there in a the string and also we'll put a comma there and type token type dot bot because this is a bot and then uh, we can print the error to a message box just in case we do get an error so we'll say x dot message just like that and now if I run that we should go to discord and we should see the bot come online and you see how instant that was to come online like instant we close it it's not as instant to um, go offline because um, what we can do is if we click on the form load here um, click on load and we'll go up to uh, form closing and inside here we'll just type discord dot disconnect and now that will disconnect us straight away um, the best way to do it in my opinion so now we connected the next thing we want to do is we're going to create a new function just like with Skype bots we have a message function um, we're going to we're going to call it private sub on message and we'll give it two parameters because that's what the uh, if we type it here handles discord dot message we're going to be using message received for this one because obviously um, we only want the bot to reply when it's received and then if we hover over that if it's going to show me we need two things in here uh, we need the sender as it's got to be an object and also the message we can call it a message as uh, discord if I try and get this right message event args there we are and we shouldn't get an error doing that so there we have it this is going to be our little um, on message so every time a message is coming in this is going to trigger and whatever's inside of here is going to take effect um, so some one thing I noticed while I was testing this is when the bot sends a message it will do the, it will do the first thing as you like but it will it will recognize its own message as a message and then try and respond to that which is going to cause a few problems so the first if check we want to do is say if message um, dot user dot name is equal to and this is where you will put your bot name uh, mine is Mr. Mark 4G3 bot then uh, we're just going to put it ignore it because that way if it does try and send a message back it's just going to ignore its own message it's fairly straightforward and that is um, trust me you need this code here otherwise it will be very annoying for you and it will just spam um, so you've, now you've got that in the next thing you want to do is uh, actually get the message so we can say dim message uh, as a string I don't know what that happened there the message as a string will be equal to message dot message and we're going to be using the raw text I tried it with another way um, for some reason it wasn't even working at all so I decided to go ahead and use the raw text so now we've got that we're going to check if just like the usual bots if the message dot contains or dot starts with our trigger so now let's go ahead and create that we'll say dim trigger as a string will be equal to and we'll use the um, typical trigger the exclamation mark if the message starts with the trigger then let's check out what's going on um, else just ignore this message as well because there's no trigger the next thing we want to do is check if the message contains a space. Now if you've watched my other Skype bot tutorials you'll recognize where this is already going. Um, it's exactly the, like the same pretty much. So we're going to check if it's a space. This will be a double command. This one will be a single command. And if you're completely new I'll explain it for you as well as we go on. So for a double command that means there's an argument to it. Uh, that's how I like to uh, 
call it for the bots. Um, so what we've got is usually double commands. You'll have like some sort of argument which you want to use that argument. So you need to get it. So the the command here is going to be dim command as a string. Um, it's going to be equal to message dot split, and we're going to do the first split at the trigger, and we're going to take the right side of it, and then we're going to do another split, and we're going to split at the space within it. And then we're going to take the left side, which will be zero. Now that might be kind of complicated, but I'll go over it as well. And then we've got the argument as a string, and that will be equal to message dot split, and we'll split at the very first space, and we'll take the right side, which will leave us with the argument. And then for the single command, it's a little bit easier. Dim command as a string will be equal to um, message dot split. And we're going to split at the trigger and we're just going to take the right side because there is no space so we're going to, always going to be left with just the command now the next thing we can do is we're going to use a select case cmd dot to lower and um, we'll work in lowercase so we'll just make sure everything's lowercase um, just to be safe and we can say um, case for a double command we can just say um, test and then we'll do whatever here in a second and what you can say here is case else um, this is where you can respond like invalid command or something so to send a message back to the chat which a message was um, triggered in you can type message dot uh, channel dot send message and notice you can also do send file and stuff like that there's a lot of things you can actually do with this API it's pretty good actually um, so we'll send the message here invalid command just like that and then for test uh, what's the problem here oh, I didn't close off that now for test we'll just reply back to them uh, your argument is we'll say plus arg just like that just to see if the arguments are working now we can copy this full select case here because it's just the same down here except there's not going to be any argument in this case so instead of test we'll just put it to uh, help and we'll just send like uh, commands and we can do um, plus vb new line which will create a new line and then the first command we have is test um, shows a test argument and that'll just be a simple few commands for us to try out now we're pretty much done we'll give that a launch up go over to discord uh, the GUI there's nothing there but you can actually put stuff there if you really want to which I'll probably go over this video will probably be more than one part anyway as they usually do so we've got a few commands that we can try here and the first one being help uh, be sure to put the uh, trigger obviously and then you can see the Mr. Murkish bot has replied commands test shows an argument so we can try that out test now and it will be an invalid command because if you remember test was a double command so we need a space so we can use test and this will be the argument now and, it's going, and Mr. Merkage is now the argument. So if we press enter, it should say your argument is Mr. Merkage. So hopefully you can see where we're going with this. Um, like what we can do with the arguments and stuff. So you can place this on the end of links and stuff for APIs, which we'll get to. So we can actually shut down the bot. And you should notice it went offline instantly now that we added the uh, disconnect part in. Um, so that's a basic bot with working commands so that is really all I need to show in the first part of this tutorial um, but what I want to do before I go is show you an API so we can go to Google and we'll just get a um, joke API up which I usually do and we'll just go to this oops I clicked the wrong link We'll get this one now it's going to return in JSON but we'll just ignore that uh, unless this one actually does a plain text which I'm pretty sure it doesn't uh, so anyway we'll just take 
this. Um, let me just check if this is the right one. If we navigate to it. No, so we need random jokes. So here we are. We'll get a random joke. It's going to return in JSON format, sorry. So you can do a bit of like hacky sort of stuff to get rid of all the rest. Or you could use the proper way. Um, but I'm not going to do none of that right now. What we're going to do is create a new dim, we'll call it uh, w client, as a new system.net.web client, just so we can get that. Now we'll create a single command, that's, that's all it really needs to be. Case. Uh, we'll just say joke and we got message dot channel dot send message and we can do here w client dot download string and if we download the string from this uh, URL the bot is going to reply with a um, with a joke for us so if we launch this bot up uh, go over to here and we type joke you can see the bot has replied what would be a clean looking bit of a like a text with a joke if we removed all the mess um, so that is it for a bot and that's how you use APIs so I'm going to stop debugging with that um, and leave everything for now that's basically a basic bot set up and working with a discord um, which someone replied to um, so that's all I've really got to show for this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and I'll see you next time.